Always read and understand the manual and safety procedures before using any digital multimeter. If you have any questions, make sure you talk to somebody who does understand it. You're working with electricity and that can potentially be hazardous. Here we're going to be looking at the Milwaukee 2216-20 digital multimeter. Measures volts, resistance, amps, but you also get hertz and capacitance. Those can be useful features when you're working with a generator. This multimeter is also an auto ranging multimeter. You can select the range for better resolution if you know generally where you're looking or leave it on auto which will uh, be most of the time. Uh, this meter also has backlight, min-max function, and hold. Alright, let's take a look at a few measurements here. Let's start with DC volts. DC will be the straight slash dashed line. AC volts will be the uh, sine wave. So when you're measuring volts, resistance, hertz, or capacitance, you'll use this side of the meter and your COM port. When you're measuring amps, you'll use the left side. All right, so let's look at DC volts here. 12.74 volts. All right. Now, if you happen to reverse the leads, you'll notice it reads negative 12.74 volts. That tells me which lead is which, or which terminal is which. Um, if you had two battery cables that were the same color, or if the little plus and minuses on the top of the battery were wore off, or if this printing was wore off, you'd be able to tell which was the positive side and which was the negative side by checking both ways. Whichever way is negative is the wrong way. All right, and uh, if you were to uh, range that, see here, 12.75, but if I choose a higher range, yeah, now it's reading 12.7, so I don't have as much resolution as I could. Now, if I'm on millivolts and I try and measure the range, it'll say overload because my range is too low. So, ranging, useful if you're looking for better resolution, otherwise auto. Alright, now let's look at AC volts. AC volts... hundred and twenty point one utility power I would expect to see hundred and twenty volts now using the multimeter you can also verify your hot and your neutral so here I'm gonna measure that side to ground I have hundred and twenty volts so that's gonna be my hot and my neutral millivolts so I can basically disregard that. I know that that there, the left side, is my neutral and the right side is my hot. Uh, now let's look at Hertz. Hertz, useful when you're working on a generator, verifying that it's running properly. A hack you can do is 1 Hertz equals 60 RPM. So if you multiply the Hertz by 60, that'll give you your engine RPM. 
here you can see we're getting 60.02 hertz again it's utility power so i would expect to see 60 hertz all right now let's go to resistance there's two settings that will measure resistance you have the beep function and you have the regular ohm symbol there this will measure they will both measure resistance the beep function beeps if it's below 30 hertz or 30 ohms so here this resistor here it's over 30 ohms so I'm not going to get the beep. Now let's go to ohms. 168 ohms. This particular one is rated at 169 ohms. So we can tell if the resistor is good. And you can see that the beep function only works if it's below 30 ohms. Now, with resistance, you gotta be careful with range. It's really easy to be out of range with ohms. So, it's a good idea so now this is kilo ohms, not ohms, 169. It's correct, it's 0.169 kilo ohms, so you've got to move the decimal place three, point, three spots over. That'll give you 169 ohms, but it's not really the right range to measure in. So make sure you're in the right range. And uh, you can see here you'll have kilo ohms, mega ohms, and if we reset it, we we'll go back to auto. Like I said before, auto is where you're gonna have it 90% of the time. All right, so those are the most common functions of a digital multimeter. Now. We're going to get into capacitance. Capacitance is its not too common. You're going to use it anytime you're measuring, obviously, a capacitor. Uh, might be an electric motor or an older style capacitor type generator. Either way, this is a common failure point in electric motors and generators and is very easily checked with the right meter. Uh, the unit of measurement we're looking at is this UF, it's microfarad. This one's rated at 35 microfarad, plus or minus 5%. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna discharge it, just bridge between the two legs. That way we don't shock ourselves. All right, 35.3 microfarad. So we know that this is a good capacitor. It's within spec. And uh, like I said before, most common point of failure in electric motors and capacitor type generators. They're cheap parts and they're very easy to check. All right, let's take a look at amps now. Like I said earlier, for amps, you're going to move your red cable to the left side, the amp side. Uh, now the meter will always say what it's rated at. I don't know if you can see that, but it says 10 amps fused. Uh, there's a fast blow fuse in the back of this. That'll keep you from overloading your meter, potentially uh, melting these leads, you know, getting hurt, causing damage. So keep that in mind when you're measuring a circuit. You can't test the max amp draw of a generator with 
a DMM. That you would need a clamp meter for. Um, these are for low amp draw measurements. An amp, a, a clamp meter is for high amp draw measurements. Today we're going to look at you know, a light bulb and a tail light assembly, low amp draw items. So first let's look at AC amps. So we've got the sine wave amp. And we're also going to be on auto ranging. Uh, again, you can always choose the range if you know generally where it's going to land and you want the best resolution. In this case, auto ranging is just fine. So, this, jam that in there, that in there. Try and do this so you can see both. There we go. 0 0.509 amps. 0 0.51 amps. So half an amp. That makes sense. We've got 120 volts, like we saw earlier. Amps times volts equals watts. And this is a 60 watt light bulb. So, spot on. So that's AC amps. Um, something I've done, if you happen to be using a clamp meter, is this is a test cord I made where I separated out the hot and the neutral line. It allows me to clamp on to one of the lines when using a clamp meter. And then I can plug whatever item in here. All right, now let's look at DC amps. It's gonna be the same way we measured AC amps. You're gonna complete the circuit through the multimeter. So I have the ground line hooked up here. Now we're going to, let me move this so you can see. We're going to complete the circuit through the meter. So 0 0.857, 0 0.856, 0 0.86 amps. For, and that looks like the running lights. Brake lights. 2.1 amps so you can see the different ratings of the two different bulbs there check them together 3 amps alright 